a service of CNC Worldwide. The Daily is a service of CNC News and Jib Jab Greetings. I'm Bud Lowell. Full AccuWeather forecast is right across the top of every CNC local news page. A mid-level state appeals court has upheld the right of local governments in New York to ban fracking inside their boundaries. The ruling by the Appellate Division 3rd Department in Rochester affirms the fracking ban adopted by the town of Dryden in Tompkins County. In a unanimous decision, the four justices rejected an appeal from Norse Energy to overturn the ban. Norse took over the case from the Anschutz Exploration Group, which had some 22,000 acres of land in the town optioned for possible natural gas drilling. That's when the fracking ban was adopted in August of 2011. Norse bought out the Anschutz assets and was not thrilled that the town rendered them essentially valueless. Hydrofracking involves injecting high-pressure water and chemicals into the underground rock strata to break them up and release the natural gas. The technique has greatly expanded the nation's gas supply, but environmentalists don't like the risks of possible water contamination that come with it. New York State's regulatory process on hydrofracking gas wells has now dragged on more than four years without resolution, and that led some localities to adopt their own laws on the issue. The Minority Democratic Party Caucus on the Monroe County Legislature has called again for the county to adopt its own natural gas well fracking law in the wake of this decision. The Democrats introduced a legislative referral last fall, but the majority referred it to the county administration, which has not taken any action on it. The Democrats' proposal was not an outright fracking ban. Instead, it would have put a moratorium on disposal of the waste fluids from the fracking process inside the county. A Main Street storefront was damaged Thursday when a stunt went a little bit awry on the amazing Spider-Man 2 movie shoot in downtown Rochester. The tow truck being chased by police cars in the scene went off the road after a staged crash with another vehicle. It hit what are called catch cars. They're parked along the route to keep an out-of-control vehicle from smacking into a building. In this case, the truck was prevented from ramming the building hard but a front window on the Daily Record newspaper building was smashed. A city-owned planter and a bus stop bench also smashed. <gasps> they crashed! They crashed! All captured on Kodak film by the camera crew and by oh, YouTuber Davey V on video as well as others. The city says the film crew will reimburse the record and the city for damage under their contracts. Friday's shooting continues. Street closings are Main Street from Plymouth Avenue to South Avenue all through the day. Same as before, no vehicles, pedestrian access as directed by police when it is safe to cross Main Street. Another strategically parked vehicle did its job early Friday morning when it stopped a drunk driver from hitting construction workers on I-390 in Henrietta. The Monroe County Sheriff's Department has charged 32-year-old David Kurtz of Livonia with DWI. He crashed in the work zone at 390 northbound near Highland Drive. Kurtz hit the crash truck at about 2 in the morning. The crash truck is parked in the closed lane ahead of where the crew is working, just in case something like this happens. Kurtz suffered minor injuries in the wreck. Nobody else was hurt. Officials broke ground in Rochester on Thursday for the $100 million College Town project. A 14-acre mixed-use development that will go up along Mount Hope Avenue between Elmwood Avenue and Crittenden Boulevard along the east side of the University of Rochester campus. The project will have housing, retail, and supermarket space, a hotel, and conference facilities. At the center will be a Barnes and Nobles. It will give the approach to the U of R campus a whole new look that university and city officials have been working towards for years. They say it will create an urban village that connects the River Campus with the Mount Hope neighborhood. College Town is getting $4 million in state support from the Governor's Regional Economic Development Council. The trial of Devante Lively continues in Rochester. On Thursday, Prosecutor Kelly Wolford brought up police witnesses who testified how they believe the evidence links Lively to the murder of 17-year-old Larry Butler. The East High School student was beaten, strangled, and stabbed just over a year ago. Her body was dumped into a swimming pool next door to Devante Lively's grandmother's house in Arundaquoit. The prosecution says Lively killed the girl in the basement of that house and disposed of the body. 
Rochester police have charged a former city man with second-degree murder in a 2007 cold case. Police say 48-year-old Daryl Boyd was arrested as he was being released from 15 months in the Clinton Correctional Facility, where he served for a different offense. He was linked to the crime through evidence developed by the Monroe County Medical Examiner's Office. In Orleans County, police say they located a missing girl and are interviewing a man in connection with her disappearance. Albion police say 12-year-old Marina Zepatella was found Thursday on Route 77 near the thruway exit. They think she left the Albion Middle School Wednesday with the man, and they have information the two were seen together in Buffalo. To the left of the player window are links to these and other stories. At the bottom of the page, links you can use to post news and information directly to us or tell us about that great cell phone video you captured and that you have up on YouTube. We like to know about these things. So the next news is as it happens. The updates are as necessary, which you can help us be the judge of. I'm Bud Lowell, CNC News.